on the bench I have a 1962 Fender Princeton non-reverb unit. This amp is kind of special because it's not going to require a preliminary checkout. I already know what's wrong. So here she is all the way from Hawaii. Take a look at that power transformer. She blew up and boy does it smell like it, right? So first thing we're going to do is gut out the transformer and the power supply cap, clean the surfaces, replace the transformer and the cap, and then we'll test the power supply. Should be a fun one. All right, here is the Princeton amp. My replacement transformer and filter cap are awaiting their new rusting spot. You can see the original power transformer. The paint was bubbled here. Okay. Filter cap looks like it's been changed in the past. And you see all this soot on the chassis from the little forest fire. What a shame, huh? Take a look at this grid coupling cap. See how he's been sweating? So it's hard to say what caused the exact failure. Maybe he had a bias issue and the tubes went warp drive and the transformer couldn't handle it. Possibly being overfused. I don't know. But this amp came from Hawaii, so there's a chance that maybe moisture got into this transformer and it just developed an internal short. Okay. The other thing I need to point out before I change the transformer, you see our 6 volt filament line here. It just hits the tubes one wire at a time, and then the other side of the filament circuit in this model amp is grounded. So there may be some filament balancing issues. So when I put in the new transformer, it actually has the center tap on the 6 volt AC filament line circuit. So we're going to wire this like a typical fender with the twisted pairs going down the line. All right, let's get this old stuff out, clean it up. Well, let's start by getting this transformer out of the way. Then I'll work my way over to the filter cap. You can, see our, you can see our ground wire from the cord was actually under one of the retaining nuts for the transformer. And the death cap is also under one of the nuts holding the transformer. So when we get all done, the new transformer goes in, I'm going to clean up this power cord and solder the ground direct to the chassis like I normally do. Okay. So remember, there's nothing really to save on this power transformer. So we're just going to clip the wires off and get her out of here. I'll leave some little runners so I know what was where. But man, is she baked. Stiff. Look at that. Craziness. You know, I don't get too many of these amps in that have fried power transformers. So, that's a good thing. I mean, a lot of these transformers are really holding up for the test of time. But I'm sure that we're going to see more and more failures as time goes by. Because everything has a life, right? So the real bummer is, I'm sure you saw, that I'm going to be using a Classic Tone replacement. And Classic Tone is going out of business, so I'm not going to be able to get those in the near future. I'm not sure who I'm going to use. Maybe New Sensor, maybe Hammond makes some drop-in replacements, I'm not sure. I'm pretty bummed out about... Uh, classic tone ending it all. I understand though. Alright. What am I got going here? We're still holding on to dear life. There she is. There she is, man. Goodbye 125P1A. Okay. Get this hardware out of here. We'll move over to the filter cap. Same deal. There's nothing to save, but I'm going to cut these terminals off near the cap. So I'll leave my road map of what was where. Get these tabs. 
tabs up out of the way. I had somebody comment a long time ago. They said, boy, I can't believe you're treating those high dollar wire cutters that way. I pay $6 a piece for these, okay? So no, I'm not abusing like an x Lite set, okay? These are fairly inexpensive and kind of disposable. Yeah, that guy's hanging on. So what I like to do is just clip these tabs, get the cap out of the way, then I'll clean all this up with Snozoramus, okay? So this cap was actually 70, 40, and 40 microfarad at 450 volts. I do not believe that those were the original values. What's going in it is a CE manufacturing cap. It's a 40, 40, 20, 20 at 525. All right. Now I need to clean up this chassis a bit with old Snozzarino. Get the solder off the chassis. We're going to wipe it down. Maybe with lacquer thinner, I believe. That should probably do the trick. It looks like the soot only made it up to the eyelet board. So I'm going to loosen the eyelet board. We'll clean underneath of it, but I prefer not to pull this board because I don't want to interrupt what's left of the original configuration. Okay? Let's clean up these solder globs on the chassis. Good old Snozoramus on the job. Get these old tabs off of here. Now I'll take a little wick. Clean up the solder globs. So we got something a little bit better to solder to. Come on, there she goes. All right. Got a piece of wick here. Wipe up the mess. But we don't need to take all the solder off, right? I just want the big bump out of my way so that I can fold tabs back over. Get the new parts installed. So, I'll clean that up. But what I want to do now is get some lacquer thinner and see what it does to the soot. Now here's a little dab of lacquer thinner. Let's see how it does. Stuff's really baked down there. You can see it kind of pitted the metal. So I'll do my best to clean it up. No guarantees. But I want to get as much of that off the chassis as possible. And I found that using a toothbrush really works well. So what I'm going to do is clean up in the areas where I need to work and later on I'll detail this thing out with a toothbrush and some q-tips. So I just kind of pinch these tabs down using a screwdriver. Get that cap oriented in the direction that they show on the layout diagram. Now, I don't want to disappoint you guys. I know what you're after. I know what you want. So let's make it happen. And here he comes. Good evening. Sit back, relax, light up an old ghoul. Snows Ramos. On the scene. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. They have... A lot of ghouls come from Portugal. <laughs> Didn't get through that whole operation, did I? 
So the filter cap is soldered into place. Let's bring in the new classic tone power transformer. Drops right into the spot of the original. No modifications required to the chassis. Now the one I'm replacing here is actually kind of a high performance transformer. This is not the stock Princeton transformer. This one gives you an option of two different high voltage feeds. So you can actually boost the power up a little bit on your Princeton. And that's what we're going to do with this one. So there will be a set of high voltage leads that we will not be using. Okay. So to take care of the additional leads, I don't leave them hanging. I'm going to add a terminal board here where we can land those leads, keep this installation nice and neat. Okay. Well, I went ahead and uh, soldered the ground with line cord to the chassis. Now this green, yellow, and red, yellow are the center tap grounds on the transformer. Let's see if I can do both of these at the same time, huh? Oop, of course not. Okay. Well, that's the way it goes, isn't it? Let's see here. I can do this without torching myself. Alright, well, I'm going to have to touch that up. After I get those properly soldered, then I saw these two nifty holes in the chassis. Remember I told you I want to put in a terminal board for the extra AC leads because this transformer actually has 220 or 120 windings. We're going to wire for 120. And then we also have these two leads, which are spare high voltage leads that I'm also going to tie to this terminal board. All right, here's that terminal board I told you I was going to install utilizing the existing holes in the chassis. So this is going to give me a little landing pad for wiring. The red whites are the high voltage secondaries that I'm not going to use. We're going to use the red lines, which are a higher voltage out, so those will go to the rectifier tube, as well as the yellows, which are the 5 volt AC for the filament, okay? Over here is the 120 volt wiring, so the black and brown with white stripe go together, and then the black and browns go together, right? So I'm going to go ahead solder these guys so they don't take off on me. And then what we need to do is bring our hot and neutral from the incoming power to these two terminals. And then this guy will be happy. He'll have his 120 on the primary. All right, we're getting down there. I have the primary lines hooked up to the feed on the transformer. My filament lines are zinging over here, waiting to be hooked up. So now, I'm going to bring the yellow and red lines over to the rectifier tube. We'll solder those up, then we're going to get the filament circuit hooked up, which is now going to be different. Okay, We're not going to use a single wire, and we're not going to ground one side of it. This has the center tap of the filaments already hooked up. So if we want a nice balanced filament circuit, we're going to rewire this like they did in later fenders. All right, it's time to do the filaments. Remember I told you we're going to do this like a fender does nowadays with the twisted pairs come up off a right angle, hit each tube down the line. So we're going to have to start here at the first 6V6. If you look, there's a jumper wire connecting uh, 7, 8, and 1 all together and pulling those to ground. I'm going to remove this ground completely. We're going to reconfigure 7 and 2 like it should be with the filament circuit. And then pin 8 will have a 1 ohm shunt resistor 
that goes to this ground point so that we can monitor the bias when we set it later. All right, there's my filaments going to two and seven. Pin eight now. We we'll have these nifty little one ohm current shunts. They're going to go to ground. So when I do this, I'll be able to put a voltmeter across these resistors and measure the current going through the tube. So if I had like 30 millivolts, that would be 30 milliamps. Okay? So it's kind of a nice way to get a bias reading without having to calculate anything. You just kind of power it up. Throttle back your bias pot. Hook your meter up there. And dial it in. It's just that simple as one of my Air Force instructors used to say. Alright. Coming along pretty well on this amp. I do spot some other things that are going to need attention. Show you here in just a second. I don't have a heart attack, guys. I just tack this stuff in. Later on, I go over and inspect every connection. Okay? So if it needs some touch up solder, I will do it at that point. Okay. Alright, moving forward on this, we have our negative bias pot here. That's an old Allen Bradley 10K pot. I simply epoxied that to the chassis, didn't drill any holes, okay? So that's how you adjust your bias. I changed out this resistor here with one of the good old carbon style. Now I want to get some of these caps replaced, especially the two grid caps going to the output tubes. And there's a couple electrolytics down the line. So I'll change those four caps. We're gonna install tubes and see if this thing sings. So we're going to start with Mr. Sweaty grid cap here. They get sweaty like this, guys. Pretty good an indication uh, that they're bad. Either way, I always just change out the grid caps. I don't chance it. If there's anything that can wipe out your output tubes, it's DC leakage through your grid caps. So, good investment, just go ahead and change them. All right, it's power up time. I've got my meter set across the high voltage cap. I've got a 25,000 ohm resistor that's gonna bleed that off, okay? So I'm just checking for the presence of high voltage, and then we'll move our probe over and make sure that we have our negative bias, okay? So I've got a variac over here, we're gonna bring it up. I'm not going to go full voltage. I just want to make sure that we have high voltage. And there it is. Okay, I'm only at about uh, 70 volts applied right there. Now let's move over to the negative bias. Because that is super important to have that. Alright, same deal. It's about 70, 80 volts. You can see we got negative 22 volts. If I adjust the bias pot. I can swing that around, so that's a good thing. The only thing I have not checked yet is the filament circuit because I don't have my lamp wired up yet. So I'm going to leave the bleeder in place. What we're going to do, since we know the filament circuit is grounded on one side, just going to grab it here so we should see, you know, like three volts or so. Okay. Yep, okay. Once again, I'm only about 80 volts applied. So we've got filament power, we've got negative bias, and we got high voltage. So the next step will be to check these caps on the eyelet board. We already know a couple of those are in bad shape. So I'm going to change them out, get that to where I feel safe applying power. We'll install tubes and see if we can get a signal through it. 
All right, here we go. The moment you've all been waiting for. I have all the tubes installed in the Princeton. I'm going to power it up. We're going to set the current through one of the output tubes. So I have my meter set up right now from one shunt to ground. So what you're seeing on the meter is the actual current through one output tube. Okay, here it comes. Tube's going to warm up, stabilize. So for the initial power up, let's just say we want 20 milliamps of current. Okay, so I'm going to get on here on the old Allen Bradley pot. I'm going to bring up my current. Okay, look at there, 20 mils, right on the money. It's perfect, right? Now let's say that you're doing this and you forget to disable your tremolo circuit. So I have a jumper right now that's turning that off. On this amp. That thing's running all the time, unless you have a shorting plug installed or a pedal on that tremolo input. So now look at my bias. You're going to be like, well, how do I set my bias? It's like dancing all over the place. And look what, look what happens when I bring up the intensity. It even gets worse. Okay. So that's something that I always make sure to do on these older Princetons. Is short out that function so that you can get a good stable reading. All right, she's up. She's pulling uh, current on tube. Let's check the other side and make sure that they're balanced. Yep, excellent. Let's put a signal in it. I've got my audio generator as an input into a dummy load watching on the scope. There's our signal. She looks really nice. We disconnect our tremolo defeat. Oh yeah. Thing is working great. <clears throat> See what our tone does. Yep, yeah, a little bit of dirtiness in that control right there, but all in all, Princeton is ready for a live test. There's a final review on the 62 Princeton amp. Let me go over everything I did to make her sing again. New high performance classic tone power transformer. Got a multi-section CE manufacturing filter cap rated at 525 volts. Allen Bradley pot. This is a 10K pot, which allows for adjustable negative bias to the output tubes which can be monitored by these little shunts that I installed. This was necessary because of the increased high voltage of the new Classic Tone power transformer. The bias cap has been changed as well as the diode. Swing over here to the eyelet board. I installed a set of Sprague 600 volt 0.1 microfarad caps feeding the grids of the output tubes. New speaker output jack. The other one was in pretty bad shape. Also replaced the electrolytics going to the 12AX7 tubes. A couple resistors were out of tolerance. I swapped those out. The death cap has been removed. I soldered grounds direct to the chassis and of course it has a nice set of new output tubes. The output tubes are a match set of 6V6 GTs and the two 12AX7s are Sovtech 12AX7 LPS long plate tubes. This thing really turned out nice. Of course the next thing is, so what does it sound like? <laughs> Thank you.
Speaker in the world that would handle that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's no a, doubt. He's a...